friends, Miss Danny and Mr. Monkey here from the Pleasant Hills Public Library. And we're so excited that you're here with us today for another Alphabet Adventures virtual story time. Now we're getting near the end of the alphabet, which means that we have talked about a lot of letters so far. Do you remember all the letters we've talked about? Let's see, there's A and B, C and D, E and F. G and H, I and J, K and L and M and N and O and P. And then of course there's Q and R and S and T and U and V and W. What letters are left? I wonder what letter we're going to talk about today. Hmm. Well, before we can figure that out, we need to get our wiggles out. So I hope you will join me and Mr. Monkey in singing our hello song. We're going to start by waving our arms nice and big, but be careful. Don't oh, bonk the person sitting next to you. Sorry, Mr. Monkey. Ready, friends? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you today? Terrific, let's clap our hands. Hello everybody and clap your hands. Clap your hands, clap your hands. Hello everybody and clap your hands. Clap your hands today. Fantastic. Let's stomp those feet. Hello everybody and stomp your feet, stomp your feet, stomp your feet. Hello everybody and stomp your feet, stomp your feet today. Yay! Very good. Now do you think, friends, can we stomp our feet super fast? You do, Mr. Monkey does. Let's give it a try on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ah! Whoa, freeze! Oh, that was so fast. Good job. And now let's do the opposite. What is the opposite of fast? That's right, it's slow. So let's do some slow stomping. <laughs> Very good. And now, friends, let's try stomping our feet big and loud. So last time we counted up to three. This time let's count down from three. Ready? Three, two, one. Big and loud! Whoa, freeze! <laughs> Good job! And now let's do the opposite. Hmm. What is the opposite of big and loud? That's right. Small and quiet. So let's do some tiptoes. Stomping. Very good, friends. Very good. And now our bodies are ready for stories, but we haven't figured out what the letter of the day is. Mr. Monkey, can you please go get your mystery bag? Inside Mr. Monkey's mystery bag are different items that start with the letter of the day. Let's see if we can figure it out. Whoa, what do you have in there, Mr. Monkey? That's kind of big. Let me see. Hmm, we have like a mallet, and then, oh, do you know what this is, friends? This is in a xylophone. It's a musical instrument. And it has different metal parts that make different notes. Isn't that cool? Hmm, a xylophone. Hmm, I wonder what letter that starts with. Oh, what else do we have in here? Oh, this is a picture. Picture of a hand, but it's a special kind of picture. Do you know what this is called? This is an x-ray. And it's a type of picture that allows doctors and scientists to see through your skin and see your bones. So this is an x-ray of somebody's hand. Look at all those cool finger bones. Hmm. X-ray. I wonder what that starts with. Oh, hmm. now this is a tricky one, friends. Now you're going to say, Miss Danny, it's a fish. And you're right, it is a fish, but it's a special kind of fish. It's called an X-ray tetra fish. And it's called that because you can see right through its skin and see its bones, just like in our X-ray. 
pretty cool, huh? Hmm. So we had a xylophone, an x-ray, and an x-ray fish. And that's it, because this is a tricky letter. Have you figured out what our letter is yet, friends? It's X! X, X, X. So here we have an X-ray fish playing in a xylophone. Now, X is a very tricky letter. There are not that many words that start with the letter X, but there are a lot of words that have the letter X inside it, like box and fox, exit, six, X, Hmm, it's a tricky, tricky letter. The letter X can make different sounds depending on where it falls in a word. And even some words that start with the letter X can sound different. So there's not just one sound for the letter X. There's a couple different sounds. Now for our two picture items, our X-ray and our X-ray fish, it's going to make the same sound. Kind of like when you say the letter X. X, 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 ray, X, 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 ray. Very good. But for our xylophone, it makes a very different sound. Kind of like our xylophone itself. In that case, it almost sounds like the letter Z. Z, Z, xylophone. Z, Z, xylophone. And that's because of the letters that are next to it. So the letter X is very tricky. All of our stories and songs today will feature the letter X. Our first story today is about a little boy who thinks his mom has a superpower, X-ray vision. So if you remember, the picture of the X-ray I showed you allows you to see through your skin to your bones. And if you had X-ray vision, you could see through things to see what was on the other side. That would be a pretty cool power, huh? This is called My Mom Has X-Ray Vision, written by Angela McAllister, illustrated by Alex T. Smith, and read today with permission of Tiger Tales and Penguin Random House. Matthew's mom was like all the other moms. She had ordinary hair, ordinary clothes, and a nice smile. Matthew's mom was just like all the other moms, except she could see through things. Matthew was pretty sure she had X-ray vision. On Monday, he was wrestling with a giant sea monster when Mom shouted from downstairs, Matthew, sit down in the bath. How did she know what he was doing? On Wednesday, he was brewing up spells in a mountain cave to defeat a powerful wizard when Mom yelled from the kitchen, Matthew, don't use my saucepans in the yard. How did she know that she, he had them? On Friday, he was defending his castle from an enormous fire-breathing dragon when Mom called up from the living room, Matthew, don't jump on the bed. How did she know where he was? It's really weird, Matthew said to his friend Emily. My mom can see what I'm doing when she isn't there. She must have X-ray vision, like a superhero. Wow. Well, I'll ask my brother, said Emily. He's always reading superhero comics. He'll know all about X-ray vision. But Matthew had to find out for himself. Huh. I'll give mom a test, he thought. On Saturday, when mom asked him to help bring in the shopping, Matthew crept upstairs and hid in the closet. Matthew, called Mom, where are you going? Matthew smiled at himself. If Mom comes right inside, right up the stairs, right into the bedroom, and opens the closet door, then I know for sure she has x-ray vision. Matthew waited, but Mom didn't come. La la la. Ah. Matthew waited, and still Mom didn't come. Maybe she couldn't see through closets. She can see through that truck, though. Whoosh, 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 yay! And still, Matthew waited. Maybe Mom couldn't see through doors. Thank you, thank you. Oh, maybe Mom has forgotten me, thought Matthew. 
And then suddenly he heard footsteps. Someone came up the stairs and someone opened the door. Mom! cried Matthew. But it wasn't Mom. Emily offered Matthew a gumdrop. My mom, my brother says that moms never have x-ray vision, she said, and he knows. He's right, said Matthew, sighing. I was wrong. I hid, but she couldn't find me. She's not a superhero. She's just an ordinary mom like all the rest. And then they heard a rustle in the hall. Let's put these groceries away, said Mom. So Matthew and Emily helped Mom, and she thanked them with her nice, ordinary smile. Come on, Emily, said Matthew. Let's go play outside. But just as they made a dash for the door, Matthew, shouted Mom, don't hide that bag of chips under your sweater. Well, Matthew looked at Mom suspiciously, and then a big grin crept onto his face. Guess what? He whispered to Emily. I think my mom has eyes in the back of her head. Pretty silly, huh? It can sometimes feel like our moms or our grown-ups have eyes in the back of their heads, but they don't really. And now, friends, let's do a little rhyme slash song that incorporates some words that have the letter X. This song is all about a fox in a box. Now, friends, we're going to sing The Fox is in the Box. It goes to the tune of The Farmer in the Dell. Right now, our silly fox is inside the box. The fox is inside the box. The fox is inside the box. Oh, what a silly fox. The fox is inside the box. I wonder where he's going to go next. Now the fox is on top of the box. The fox is on top of the box. The fox is on top of the box. Oh, what a silly fox. The fox is on top of the box. I wonder where he'll go next. Now he is under the box. The fox is under the box. The fox is under the box. Oh, what a silly fox. The fox is under the box. Hmm, I wonder where he'll go next. And now the fox is to the left of the box. The fox is to the left of the box. The fox is to the left of the box. Oh, what a silly fox. The fox is to the left of the box. I wonder where he'll go next. Now the fox is to the right of the box. The fox is to the right of the box. The fox is to the right of the box. Oh, what a silly fox. The fox is to the right of the box. What a silly fox. If you're ever out looking for a treasure, you might already know that if you see the letter X, that marks the spot where the treasure can be found, on a map or on a treasure island. And our next story, three friends, Zigby, Birdie, and McNear, all go on an adventure trying to find that treasure where the X marks the spot. This is Zigby Hunts for Treasure, written and illustrated by Brian Patterson and read today with permission of HarperCollins Publishing. Early one morning in Mudwater Creek, Zigby and his friends were going canoeing. Jump in, Bertie, said Zigby. Oh, what if the canoe tips over? Bertie worried. Hurry up, urged McMeer. I can't hold this picnic basket forever. They set off, and suddenly Zigby spotted something. What's this, he said, and it was a bottle. He picked it up, and a piece of paper fell out. Ah, oh, it's a map, exclaimed McMeer. Give it to me. I can read maps. The map was labeled Parrot Island and showed a rope bridge, a big cave, a snake, and a tree marked with an X. <gasps> X stands for treasure, said Zigby. McMeer shouted, let's go on a treasure hunt. Well, the friends paddled on further from home than they'd ever been before. This way, McMeer pointed, but Bertie was frightened. Sh shouldn't we turn back now? He asked in a small voice. Are we there yet? asked Zigby. Ah, oh, this map keeps floating the wrong way, grumbled McMeer. Ah, oh, you're rocking the boat, cried Bertie. Just then, the wind blew the map right into Zigby's face. Oh, I can't see. Watch out, shouted Bertie. But it was too late. The canoe struck a big rock and Bertie toppled overboard. Help! 
mouth, I can't swim, he gasped. Well, grab this, called Big Mirror, throwing the picnic basket in the water. It sank. So did all their food. There was only one thing to do. Zigby jumped into the rescue. <laughs> it's okay, Zigby laughed. It's not deep at all. McMeer rescued the empty basket and pulled the canoe to shore. And suddenly they heard a flapping noise. <gasps> Parrots, said Zigby. This must be Parrot Island. I told you I could read maps, shouted McMeer. Let's go find that treasure. Zigby and Bertie followed McMeer up a steep path to a long rope bridge. Hurry up, you two, called McMeer. Well, stop shaking the bridge, McMeer, squawked Bertie. When they reached the other side, McMeer ran ahead. Look, said McMeer, the cave. Do, do, do we really have to go in there? asked Bertie. Stay close to me, said Zigby bravely. They peered into the dark cave and carefully they inched forward. And then suddenly, whoo, they slid down a snake-like tunnel until bump, ow, oh my, ow, my bottom hurts, moaned Bertie. Ouch. They spilled out onto a beach. Well, we're right back where we started, said Zigbee. <sighs> Stupid map, grumbled McNear. Well, you can't really read maps, can you? groaned Bertie, and he grabbed the map. Let go, cried McNear. Rip. Now you've torn it, said McNear. I want to go home, Bertie cried. Look, said Zippy, where are the pears going? And the friends ran after the birds and found the tree from the map, said Zippy, and it's covered with fruit. Oh, my favorite. They ate and ate and ate until they were too full to move. Ah, delicious, McMeer sighed. But, but where is the treasure? asked Bertie. Well, on the tree, of course, said Zigby. It's the best kind of treasure, <laughs> the kind you can eat. Later, the friends paddled away. Oh, what an adventure, said Zigby. Well, I wish we had a map to help get us home, said McMeer. No more maps, groaned Bertie. Never mind, Zigby smiled. I think we have all the help we need. Thanks, parrots. What a fun adventure. And now, friends, let's learn the American Sign Language sign for the letter X. You're going to start with your dominant hand. Put all of your fingers except for your pointer finger down. You can use your thumb to hold them down if you'd like. Take your pointer finger. This one's a little tricky. We're going to scrunch it like this, kind of like making a miniature pirate hook. Arr. And that is the letter X. X, X, X. Very good. Now, we've learned a lot of signs so far. Do you remember them all? It can be hard because there's quite a lot. So let's review the signs for the letters we've learned so far. A is a fist with your thumb on the side. B has your fingers going up and your thumb across. C looks like that good old letter C. D, you bring all your fingers except for your pointer finger down and it goes up like that. E, you scrunch them together. F is opposite, so your pointer finger goes down and your other fingers are spread out. G is one finger out with your thumb parallel. H is two fingers out. I is just your pinky. J, you take that pinky and you dip it. K, you're going to put kind of a peace sign, two fingers up and your thumb in between. L looks like the letter L. M, your thumb goes between your ring finger and your pinky finger. N, bring it over so now it's in the middle. O looks like O. P is an upside down K, so you have your two fingers going down and your thumb in between. Q is kind of like G, but upside down, so you're going to make a pinch. R has your two fingers crisscross like this. S has your finger going across the side, so it's different from A that has your thumb here because your thumb goes across. T, your thumb goes in between your pointer and your middle. U, your two fingers go up like this. V, open them wide. W, add an extra, looks like that W. And X, where you scrunch your finger into a little hook. Whew. That's a lot of letters, huh, friends? And we still have 
two more. I wonder what they could be. Let's review all the letters in the alphabet now by singing the ABC song together. While we sing, you can dance to the beat, you can clap to the beat, you can stomp to the beat, you can freeze dance to the beat, whatever you'd like to do. Are you ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Yay! Good singing, friends. <laughs> well, my friends, that brings us to the end of another Alphabet Adventures virtual story time. We still have a few more letters, so I hope I see you back here next week. As a reminder, the library is open. Although we do ask for you to wear a mask, there are no other restrictions. So you come on in, check out some items, come say hello. We would love to see you. We also have various craft and steam kits available for free for pickup inside our lobby. So if you're looking for something to do to beat that summer heat, stop by and grab a craft kit or two. All right, my friends, it's time now to sing our goodbye song. So look around and find someone or something to hug. And join me and Mr. Monkey in singing our goodbye song. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Yay! Thanks, friends. Have a great day. Bye.